farm, family, community. This is Midwest Farm Weekly. Good morning, I'm Elaine Wells and thanks for joining us on Midwest Farm Weekly. We start with youth and agriculture today. Currently, 40% of juniors and seniors in Kiwani County are enrolled in the Youth Apprenticeship Program. That's second in the state for participation. The goal is to build a relationship that is beneficial for the students and the employers. On a farm, you do a lot of different stuff every day, which I like, and that was uh, what I mostly enjoyed about it. That variety drew Kiwani's Jordan Lamac to the agriculture industry. I worked on a farm before and I kind of want to go more to the diesel mechanic side, so Erica helped me out and we found a good spot. Erica Janish is one of the youth apprenticeship coaches in the county, a model unique to our region. She focuses on Kiwani High School. I personally love working with high school students, helping them transition from student to, um, you know, adult in the workforce is a really unique transition point, but it's also really special in our local community to focus on our young, excited workforce that want to get into these positions that they maybe don't know about or don't know how to, and to gain those skills to make them marketable. And um, it's really special that our local employers can um, really train and mentor these students to um, be a pipeline for their next, you know, generation of workers. We've been working with the Youth Apprenticeship Program um, for years. Since 2019, we've had 13 Youth Apprentice students. Pagel Family Businesses in Kiwani brought Jordan on as an apprentice. So I went through the diesel program through Casco in Luxembourg and Kiwani, and then um, Went to Pagels prior to today and I went to Kiwani to finish up my normal schooling. Kiwani County is part of the Northeast Wisconsin Youth Apprenticeship Consortium, covering 26 area high schools with two more joining next year. Last year, the local students earned roughly $6.5 million, an amazing boost to our local economy. We are in the high schools, we coach the students, and we do that relationship building. We're also partners with the Greater Green Bay Chamber, where we have um, someone whose full-time role is working with our area businesses and supporting them. We work with businesses big and small. Um, Bell & Health, for example, has about 70 students right now, and we work with small individual, um, like mom and pop companies, too, that can only take one student at a time. Pagels has always taken a pride in educating the youth. Um, we've had many kids that started out stone picking and moved to pile covering and then move up to working in the shop and are still here today. Um, a lot of our employees' children are now starting to come and work here in those positions and it's, it's fun to see them grow. While they place teens in a number of industries, students are often surprised by the wide variety of agriculture careers beyond the barn. Agriculture is so huge in our community and a lot of people don't think about that. Um, specifically here at Pagels, they have had um, electricians, they have had marketing, they have diesel tech. Um, there's a huge array of businesses that our agricultural industry can provide for employment opportunities and a lot of our students don't think to consider our agriculture field, which is such a huge part of our economy. Jordan continues to work for Pagels while he takes classes through NWTC. So they are paying for part of my schooling uh, up in Sturgeon Bay and then I have to work here for another two years. The Youth Apprenticeship Program has an 85% retention rate of employers making offers to students for employment after graduation. It's fun to watch them grow. Um, we consider everyone here family members. You know, we spend time with them outside of work. We get excited for triumphs in their families and their kids' lives and it's, it really is a large family feel. Um, it's always nice to work on something and fix it and then it going back out and you can see it and operate it maybe once in a while and just see it in full force. The Youth Apprentice Program is always looking for new business partners and you do not have to be in Kiwani County to participate. Many of the 18 and older requirements are waived for these students. They often have flexible schedules allowing them to work during regular business hours. We have details to connect with the team in the Midwest Farm section of wearegreenbay.com.
Welcome back to Midwest Farm Weekly as we continue to introduce you to the finalists in the running for Alice in Dairyland. Haley Heinzel is joining us today. Good morning to you. Good morning. You're from the Oconomowoc area? Correct. All yes. right. Give us a little background in your involvement in agriculture, which is a pretty long list. <laughs> so I grew up in Oconomowoc, which is quite far. It's an urban area. Um, so I didn't actually grow up on a farm like most consumers. I kind of had a big disconnect from my food and the farmers who produced it. I didn't get involved in agriculture until I was in high school. I was actually a junior when I joined FFA. Um, I learned all about the diversity and strength of our Wisconsin agriculture industry and I fell in love. In 2018 I milked a cow for the first time and I just took off from there. I'm now a graduate of the University of Wisconsin's Farm and Industry Short Course and I'll be graduating from the University of Wisconsin Madison with a degree in Life Sciences Communication this May. Talk a bit about the marketing aspect of your career so far. You really have enjoyed that part of it too. Yes, um, studying life sciences communication at Madison, I've learned a lot about the marketing yeah. side of agriculture. I love being able to tell. I love being able to tell the story yeah. and the passion of Wisconsin's farmers. That's the biggest thing I've learned is how passionate farmers are about their stewardship for the animals, the land, their communities, and I love getting to tell that story to the public. You have actually had quite a bit of interaction with Alice in Dairyland, previous Alice's. Talk a bit about why that has encouraged you on your career. I met Alice in Dairyland for the very first time about two years ago at the Wisconsin State Fair when I was working in the Dairy Lane. Uh, I was in the back milking cows and she was in the front <laughs> talking to consumers all about our $45.6 billion dairy industry um, and I just thought that was the coolest thing ever and I really wanted to do that myself. I remember when I was little sitting in those bleachers watching the cows be milked up on the stage and now I get to do that for a living and I, I just love it. Why is connecting with consumers, which is, I love how you say, like most consumers, you didn't come from a farm. Why is that an important piece? I think it's really important because I remember not growing up on a farm and not knowing where my food came from before the grocery store. And I always have people come up to me and say, oh, I have a silly question. And in my last six years of working in agriculture, I have yet to have a single silly question because I've probably asked all of them first. And I want everyone to feel comfortable and confident asking questions and being curious about agriculture. What do you hope that the world hold, holds for you beyond Ellis and Dairyland? Say you get that position for a year, then what is the, the future plan? Right now, I'm putting all my work into potentially being Alice okay. and getting my degree. Past that, I'm not quite sure yet, but I do know I will be telling the story of agriculture, and I do think that's one of the best jobs out there. Well, best of luck to you and the other finalists. You can already meet about half of the class on our website, and we're going to continue to introduce you to these young women as they work their way towards the finals happening in May in Door County. Congratulations. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning, I'm Storm Team 5 meteorologist Alexis Staniak. As we've now transitioned from snow to mostly rain, we had our first large thunderstorm system of the year come in this past week, and we accumulated anywhere from about three quarters of an inch of rain here in Green Bay up to almost an inch and a half of rain in areas like Ocano, Sheboygan, and up in Wapaka. Now as we head through the next week and a half or so, looks like more rain to come through, about an inch to an inch and a half to accumulate over the next 10 days here in Green Bay. More rain further to our south as especially through Missouri and into Illinois and even up towards Chicago. So naturally, the Climate Prediction Center does have most of Wisconsin and all of the Midwest in an above average category for temperatures or rather precipitation. Only place with below precipitation outlook is down in southern Florida. Now we will stay warm as well. Majority of the Midwest looking to stay above average in temperature as we head through the next week to even two weeks or so. However, we start off our next upcoming work week below average average 51 for this Saturday warmer Sunday into Monday and then after that temperatures stay below average for our entire next work week stretch primarily in the low to mid to even upper 50s however by the time we finally reach our end of our next weekend by next Sunday temperatures looking to start returning to above average stay with us more ag news coming up after the break Well, Jeremy Hansen here from Fox Valley Technical College for Life on the Farm. And joining me again this week is Lieutenant William Berger from the state, Wisconsin State Patrol. You know, we had so much to talk about last time. I look forward to continuing our discussion. I'm glad to be back. And like you said, there's no shortage of information to share on this topic. So, so Bill, when we register our, our semi-tractors now, that automatically requires an operator to have a CDL then, correct? Depends how you register it. Let's say, for example, we take a, a semi-tractor that is owned by a farmer. That farmer is hauling their own products, 
um, we'll just say they got their own tanker, semi-tractor in their own manure pit, whatever, and they're hauling their own manure, either as the farm owner, it might be a family member of the farmer or a farm employee. If that farmer owns that vehicle, they're hauling their own products. And it's one of those three type of classifications of your drivers, the, the owner, family member, or, or uh, employee, they're gonna have a farm waiver, which means they're exempt from needing a CDL as a farmer. The difference is now if that's a, a commercial operation or a custom harvester or a custom pit pumping service, that changes as well. And they would need a class A CDL for okay. a tractor trailer combination. Mm -hmm. If it's a straight truck with a tank on, they could get by with a farm service CDL, but um, that's limited 210 days out of the year for operation. And, and Bill, we talked a little bit about offloading like manure into a tank to be injected in the field. And you, you kind of define what an egg CD or CMV is, but there are other, there's some other concerns there, right? Yeah, so what we're starting to see more and more, um, the offloading on the roadside into frack tanks or ditch uh, dumpsters, all sorts of different terminology that's being used for those, for those big side tanks, mm -hmm. uh, side road tanks. But um, when that happens, state law basically says that if pull into that farm field, so to speak, and park off the roadway, if that's more practical to do, you have to do that. If it's more practical, I guess, to park in, on the roadway and uh, offload in the ditch, you got some other concerns now to think about. One is it's probably not gonna happen on a state or federal highway. Correct. Um, DOT requires a right of way work permit. And you know that's more for your utility contractors, things like that. But with that being said, now we go back to say the town or county roads, which is probably more applicable. You'd wanna check with your local officials, see if they require some type of right of way permit as well. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, the concern is you're blocking traffic. And state statute says that if you park, uh, stop or stand on, on, the, on a roadway like that, you need 15 feet of un unobstructed roadway in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Some of these town roads are pretty narrow and I don't know if you're gonna have that 15 feet, probably not. I would just encourage these, these farmers, the custom operators to be conscious of those regulations mm -hmm. and to not worry about you know, the, the parking ticket, if you will, from law enforcement. Worry more about the civil liability. My final question for you, Bill, is we are actually currently at our truck driving center in, in, in Appleton at Fox Valley Tech. And you do a lot with us for our truck driving program, correct? Actually, Fox Valley has been a great partnership with us um, for oh, quite a long time mm -hmm. now. Each year, we actually use your facility mm -hmm. and we use your truck shops and bays, the classrooms during spring break when it's wide open and it's open and available to us. We use it for our motor carrier inspector in service. Mm -hmm. So we bring all the inspectors over here. Um, we train them. Uh, we. We set up some mock inspections in the shop bays, things like that. So great partnership and um, great facility. Yep, Bill, you know, your, your, your information was invaluable today. I really appreciate your time spent with me just, just explaining this to me. Appreciate having the opportunity. So for Life on the Farm, I'm Jeremy Hansen. It's time to meet another finalist for the job of Alice in Dairyland. We say good morning to Michaela King. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Give us a little background on your connection to agriculture. Yeah, so I grew up in Big Bend, Wisconsin on my family's crop and beef farm. I showed beef and dairy throughout my life through 4-H. And then my passion for writing and storytelling led me to the University mm -hmm. of Minnesota where I studied professional journalism and photography. I was also really active in the Gopher Dairy Club and the Beta Chapter of Clovia, which is an agricultural sorority there. After I graduated, I worked for Hordes Dairymen and their sister publications as an advertising manager. Wow. wow. After that, um, I started as a public relations manager for Filament slash Broadhead, which I'm doing today. I write about agriculture and work to make the industry even better. I, I, you are all such young ladies and you're like, and I did this and I did that <laughs> and I did this. Why is it important to be so immersed in this industry for you? Yeah, I grew up in it. It's yeah. everything I ever wanted. Um, I was the farm kid growing up and I loved sharing that with people. And then when I went to school, I was like, well, let's try something different. And 
and I was like, let's do journalism, let's do something big city. And then I found myself right back in it with agriculture journalism. So it Thanks. really is just part of who we are, really. Talk about your connection to Alice in Dairyland. No doubt growing up, she's a figure that you have seen. Absolutely, yeah. I watched her give many speeches at the Wisconsin State Fair. And then when I was the 2019 Waukesha County Fair to the fair, I got to meet her in person and spend a whole day with her. It was so fun sharing my county fair with a state ambassador of agriculture. What excites you about the possibility of taking on this role? Yeah, I'm so excited to educate more people about agriculture and about where their food comes from. I think that's a big disconnect right now in our society is people just don't know where milk and all of the amazing food that we eat comes from. So I love being able to share that, not just in our state, but also nationally about how amazing Wisconsin agriculture is. And Alice puts on a lot of miles. She gets to see a lot of corners of Wisconsin. <laughs> For you, the process has already taken you to Door County. Yeah. I know you mentioned that was your first time visiting. It was my first time. I was so excited. I've heard so many great things, and I'm so excited to go back in May and get to tour some really amazing farms. And certainly broadening uh, your knowledge as well. What have you learned throughout this process? Because this is a very rigorous job interview. Yes, it is. So luckily for me, I already had some experience in marketing working for an agency. But for me, this process has helped me learn so much more about Wisconsin agriculture. Things like the amazing ginseng industry or the fact that I'm learning all about the honey industry, Wisconsin being 11th in honey production in the Thanks. nation. So I'm learning so much more about the diversity Wisconsin has. Well, I wish you so much luck as well as the other candidates. We are going to continue to follow this finals process and introduce you to the rest of the class and then certainly follow up in May when a new Alice in Dairyland is crowned in Door County. I'm excited to MC the finals for that team. Thank you for being here and congratulations on making it this far in a very tough job interview. Thank you. Thank you so much. This spring, you can take your family on a fiber extravaganza. Laura is here from London Dairy Alpacas, also one of the coordinators of this great event. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. This has become a rite of spring passage in our area. You guys have yes. really built a fantastic event. Introduce us for those who haven't checked it out before. Thank you. Um, well, this is our seventh year of, of doing the event. We've had a few farms kind of float in and out over oh. the years. Um, the last couple of years, we've really focused on just having a fiber event and focusing on fiber animals. So we have London Dairy Alpacas, we have Black Frog Farm, they have llamas along with quite a few other animals. So a question often comes up, what's the difference between a llama and alpaca? Here's your chance to see, <laughs> see both. And then Velvet Sheep Farm down uh, near Sheboygan. So we, we've got all three fiber farms. Black Frog Farm and Velvet Sheep Farm typically are not open to the public. So okay. this is your one and only chance to come and visit for free. To, to see those farms. What can people expect from a hands-on capacity? Because that really is the draw, I think, for families is to get up close to these animals. Right, and it's spring, people want to get outdoors and hopefully we're gonna have great weather. Um, we, we really want to educate people mm -hmm. about these animals and their unique qualities. So I brought some examples of the fibers from, okay. from various animals and people will have the chance to go right up to the fences. In some cases, we'll be walking the animals around so people can come right up to them, touch them, feel the difference and learn about the unique qualities of them. Okay, I, I have felt alpaca enough to know that that's mm -hmm. what this is, right? You are this correct. This is alpaca. And that is, that's where your background is, correct. right? You didn't talk a lot about your location. Tell our viewers about London Dairy. Uh, well, London Dairy is located just north of Two Rivers on uh, Highway 147. We have 45 alpacas. Uh, we do have some babies yet from last year. We don't okay. have any babies yet for this year. Okay. Um, and so we just want people to come out and meet the alpacas. I, I brought a little alpaca <laughs> friend with me today. Um, and uh, London Dairy also offers tours throughout the year. So if okay. people want to come back and really learn about them yeah. in depth, they can, they can call us and schedule a guided tour for an hour. And then we'll take people right out in the pasture and the alpacas can come right up to them and pet and feed them and take selfies. Oh my goodness. Based on a pair of socks I have, is this sheep? Yes, this you is are sheep correct. Wool. Okay, and this is from a... Llama. Llama. Okay, yes. well, I'm learning a lot today. Yeah. You have a chance to win some amazing prizes. People need to get a little punch card when they stop. Yeah, when they, wherever they stop okay. along the road, if they start at Velvet Sheep or Black Frog or London Dairy, um, they can pick up a little punch card like this. Okay. If, 
at each stop at each farm, they'll get a signature or a punch, and then when they get to the last farm, there'll be a container to drop Perfect. it in. And then Sunday evening or Monday morning, we're going to do a drawing, and you'll be eligible to win a basket. And each farm has oh, a I basket. So there's actually three baskets total. Um, each one's just a, a little bit different, but they've all, they're, they're worth about $125 oh total. my goodness. Well, you want to attend the Spring Fiber Extravaganza happening May 3rd through the 5th, free to visit all of these farms. Head to LondonDairyAlpacas.com for the full details. Thank you for being here and for organizing this for families. Thank you. It's, it's my pleasure. It, it's really fun to see the families come out.